Having a thin endometrium minimizes chances of egg implantation. And although medical techniques are the primary treatment for thickening the endometrium, some studies suggest that nutrition may have an impact. So if you need to thicken your uterine lining, I've got four nutritional strategies that may be helpful for you. Stay tuned. common question that I'm asked, particularly by women undergoing IVF. So what does the research say? Firstly, there are some studies that suggest that vitamin E supplementation may assist in thickening your uterine lining. And although you can get vitamin E from foods such as nuts, seeds and avocados, the amount used in research studies are significantly higher than what you get from your diet. Most women require about seven milligrams of vitamin E per day, which you can easily get from a healthy diet. But the amounts used in the research tend to range more like around 700 milligrams per day. Now, if you're thinking about taking nutritional supplements, I'd highly recommend that you do speak to your healthcare professional first, just to check that it's safe for you. And please make sure that you stop the supplements once you're pregnant as large doses of vitamin E have been known to cause small for gestational age babies. Okay, number two is a supplement called L-arginine. Now this is commonly used to increase the thickness of uterine lining and has also got a small amount of research supporting its use. L-arginine is an amino acid that helps the body build protein. It's also known for opening blood vessels to increase blood flow. Now your body usually makes all of the L-arginine that it needs itself, but it's also found in most protein rich foods, including fish, red meat, poultry, soy, whole grains, beans, and dairy products. It's usually a pretty safe supplement, but as you know, I always recommend speaking to your healthcare professional before starting a supplement. My third recommendation is to ensure that your diet is rich in whole grains. Whole grains include dark seedy breads, brown rice, quinoa, couscous, and even popcorn. Whole grains are rich in carbohydrates, protein, fiber, B vitamins, and antioxidants. It's recommended that we consume at least 48 grams of whole grains per day, but most women consume nowhere near that. An interesting study found that women who had a higher intake of whole grains had a greater chance of implantation after IVF. And research has found that for every additional serve of whole grains per day, uterine lining increased by an average of 0.4 millimeters. Now that may not sound like much, but believe me, it all makes a difference. Strategy number four is to ensure that you're consuming two to three serves of oily fish each week. Oily fish is one of the best sources of omega-3 and omega-3 has been found to be great for increasing blood flow to the uterus which is important for thickening your endometrium. Now, to help get you started, I've created a fertility meal plan for you. You can find it in the notes section below. And please feel free to ask any additional questions about diet and fertility. I'm here to help. Catch you soon. Having a thin endometrium, it's recommended that we eat whole grain. Oh, what have I done there? Sorry about that. Okay, I'll just oh. ignore that sentence. Yeah. Whole grains are rich in carbohydrates, protein, fiber, B vitamins, and something else which I can't see. It's recommended that, ah, I've messed it up.